Welcome back. I'm Roger Sutton, Editor Emeritus of The Hornbook, and I'm here today with Alyssa Gershowitz, who is the Executive Editor and Acting Editor-in-Chief, and we're with Liza Baker from Scholastic talking about picture books. In the last segment, we talked about five of the new picture books that Liza is debuting this summer and fall. And now we want to look at one in depth because I think people are always curious about how a book gets made. You were talking, I don't think we were on camera, or we were, talking about Aliki and her yeah. famous how, is, what's it? How a book is made. How, how a book is made, which we still use in our office to train people and you use it in yours. So we want to know how this book, The Three mm -hmm. Billy Goats Gruff by Mac Barnett and John Clausen, how was it made? Where did it start? So it started over a lunch with Mac Barnett. We were celebrating the fifth book in his Mac B Kid Spy mm -hmm. series, the true story of when he was a spy for the Queen of England. Um, and we had lunch near our scholastic offices. And I had been really um, obsessing over fairy tales and the fact that my kids didn't have the full menu of fairy tales um, that I felt like I really wanted to share with them and that I felt like um, it was time for someone, someone gifted to come out with a new um, series of fairy tale retellings. Um, I happen to be a huge fan of the James Marshall mm -hmm. uh, uh, fairy tales that were told many years ago now. Um, so, so during our lunch, our celebratory lunch, I asked Mac, Mac, have you ever considered retelling fairy tales and would you be interested? Because, I mean, having worked with Mac, I knew um, what, what a fairy tale needed. Um, obviously, it's been retold. The Billy Goat's Gruff, for example, have, has been retold in many different ways um, over many years. Um, we needed a singular um, somewhat mischievous, um, really powerhouse voice um, to do the retelling. And I'm thrilled to say that You Max need a powerhouse voice for this book. You do. <laughs> this was my, you know, Lillian Gerhardt, who used to be the editor of SLJ, told me every children's librarian needs to have three stories in their head so that whenever somebody needs to hear a story, they can tell a story. And Three Billy Goats Gruff was one of mine. <laughs> because you could, you know, trip, trap, trip, trap, went the bridge. Who's that tripping over my rick? <laughs> Make the little one scream. Um, so I can definitely see Mac as a fan of that this story. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and a fan and a student. He is um, a student of literature, of children's literature. We all know that. Any of us that know Mac, um, and he his eyes were so wide that by the end of the lunch, I thought. This Gonna happen. This is real. This is gonna make my dreams come true. And not long after, um, I received not one, not, not two. two. <laughs> we always work in threes in fairy tales, as, as Mac will say, um, and in acquisitions. That's classic. Um, so we acquired three books. So Max shared the manuscript um, for the Three Billy Goats Gruff um, for Rumpelstiltskin. Um, which is incredibly written, that will be next, and uh, Hansel and Gretel. Um, but we had to start with the Three Billy Goats Gruff. Um, the read aloud quality of it, the humor, as I said, the mischief, um, the sheer creativity of his menu of words. <laughs> yes. um, and I have to share this with you. Um, preparing for my conversation with you both today. Mac was very excited, but he was envious that John had all kinds of visuals to share. So he said, this is less photogenic, less photographic, but let me share my recipe for where he began. <laughs> so these are his notes, and you can see them here. Um, just his, um, you know, from, from his studio, here we have goat benedict with hollandaise, <laughs> goat sandwiches with mayonnaise. You see my mouth, what's this say? Mouth and down my throat, um, into in my, my belly, belly, little, little goat. goat. <laughs> so it's, it was so exciting for me as, as Max editor to see this window um, into his process and where he begins his journey. 
Um, it doesn't all come out perfectly, brilliantly, um, you know, brilliantly executed. There's a lot of work behind the scenes for him before it ever crosses my desk. And then the work really begins in essence too as we fine tune the story, as we, um, you know, play with the page turns, as we talk about the pacing, as we... Um, and are you still, when you're at this point, are you still just, a ma uh, just text? Yes, we're there still no just text. At this point, when Mac wrote this, we had no idea who would illustrate this story. We had begun, as I alluded to, a kickoff call. We have lots of kickoff calls where we're, we're really coming together and saying, um, you know, kind of birthing the book, the beginning stages of the book journey. Um, so I just wanted to share some of these references um, that Mac um, unearthed and shared with all of us. Um, he has an incredible collection of fairy tales. Um, not surprisingly, um, and so here's wow. the James Marshall I alluded to. So I, this literally is one tenth of the covers and the books that we wanted to channel and sort of synthesize as we were beginning our retelling journey because we take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. You can tell he takes his humor very, very seriously. <laughs> really. I love that line, it's, Alyssa. Yeah. <gasps> well, everything is always very honed with him. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, it's. I mean, the the rhymes in this, I really admire them because mm -hmm. they're so perfect. They clearly took a lot of work, but you yeah. see none of that work. Well, now we get to see it because yeah. look at what it could have been. And many of these choices work, but the choices that were made work the best. I'm trying to see if it says kale on here because that's my favorite. So, uh, yeah. Oh, here it is. Hold yeah, the kale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A kale salad. Hold the kale. Yes. My kids love that one. Um, so, so this was our journey and, and beginning. And I can't tell you how long we contemplated who would be the right artist. to. I mean, it, it almost makes me giggle at this point because we did talk visually what should this be and who would be the right artist. And then like a bolt of lightning in the night. I feel like we all, Patty Ann, Mac, and myself, all came to the same <laughs> conclusion. It simply has to be John Clausen. And once we, you know, it's like the, the clouds part, right? The, um, it was like it had to be John Clausen. And, and John, when we shared the manuscript, even though John and Mac have worked together many times over the years, you know, John wanted to see the manuscript, read it, and see if he connected with the telling, mm -hmm. and he did, um, which we were overjoyed um, to learn. And, and then began our journey with John. Um, so I can share a little bit. He's such an incredibly thoughtful, um, really deep thinker, too. Um, and so he shared um, some of these beautiful photographs that inspired the landscapes of this set that he felt like he wanted to create um, for the telling of Billy Goat's Gruff, which you can kind of see is, um, you know, John's animation background, I think, in form. So this is just impressionistic, um, these gorgeous landscapes um, that you can kind of see side by side with John's work, how this came to be. Yeah, I'm looking at how they're transformed. Yeah. Well, and in this sort of bucolic setting that you would think, yes. oh, it's going to be this one kind of story, and then it's, it's, <laughs> it's quite a different, different kind of story. And I, I can share, you know, here's the bridge. We talked about the, the um, intrigue of the bridge, mm -hmm. and um, John and Mac took their kids out on a hike, and John's little ones were just intrigued. They kept saying, where's the troll on the bridge? <laughs> so every bridge they'd sort of mm -hmm. peek mm -hmm. under. Mm -hmm. And I mean, therein lies the magic of this telling of, of you know, such a, a trope in, um, in fairy tales in general. So it, I just really wanted to sh give you this window into some of John's process. But also, I mean, check this out. It's is pretty that, creepy. Isn't that <laughs> chilling? John actually had proposed, um, oh, here's some more of the reference. Um, one thing that John and Mac really felt strongly about was the third billy goat mm -hmm. needs to be huge. <laughs> yes. Like, when you say he's big, he needs to be off the page big, mm -hmm. um, not like previously rendered. 
Um, so, uh, you know, you, you'll see that it's dramatic like, scene yeah, where it's just, like, just <laughs> the legs, I mean, incredible. And Roger, if you turn. Wow, you're really big. <laughs> I mean, this is one of my favorite images where you see them eye to eye. Oh. So, and then here are some of the troll references that John um, looked into. I mean, again, you, there are a lot of really grimly rendered um, trolls. And this is where John's process began. These are the sketches I mentioned to you that John never actually sent our way. But in his home studio, he was building, um, you know, sort of the character profiles um, and rendering. There's a actually the case cover, which you'll see when you see a bound book. This is the um, a beautiful pastoral image um, that accompanies the line all you have to do is cross the bridge. So again, more sketches here. Um, but I did want to show you, this was the cover that John had proposed originally. <laughs> and we love the sheer terror. <gasps> yes. Uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> really. But we were a little um, concerned it was maybe it veered a little bit too <laughs> scary. Um, but Well, it's not just that it's too it is scary, but I think what I like about this cover is we're not getting sort of a Cheska Smith twisted fairy tale. Yes, this we're, is we're, not. We're, I mean, there's some amplification that happens, like what happens to the troll after mm. he encounters the third Billy Goat Gruff. Yes. But it's the same story. This would make me think, oh, it's going to be one of those twisted parody yes. kind of things, and it's not. I'm so. glad you pointed that out. Yes, this is not a fractured or twisted fairy tale. Mm -hmm. It's a retelling um, and stays true to the original in its own new um, expression. Folk and fairy tale publishing used to be the backbone of this industry. Mm -hmm. And you know from at the Horn Book, we have a folklore section and often don't have anything mm -hmm. to put in it yeah. because it's lost its primacy in books for young children. First, we had you know the Marsha Browns, all the beautiful books of the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Things got crazy with the Stinky Cheese Man, and we had mm -hmm. all the twisted retellings, and then it all kind of went quiet. So, you know, I'm hoping this does show some dedication to the field on Scholastic's yeah. part. It's a priority <laughs> to me. I feel like it's time um, for us to refocus and share these stories with the next generation, so they aren't lost on them. Um, these are these are the classics, um, and there's fresh ways to tell them. I think with energy and um, with nuance. Um, so we're really really excited about this new telling. And and as I mentioned, we have two more to come. We do not know who the illustrator will be, um, but we do know you know Max uh, signature voice will um, be there and carry carry this. Um, series and I have other ideas too. Um, at what at what point here do you pull in Patty Ann? Pa as I mentioned, Patty Ann and I have worked together twenty years, so pretty much at the inception, um, you know, right after my lunch with Mac, I said I shared the James Marshall collection with Mac. He's excited. I think we're going to get a manuscript, and so I mean, our lives um, intersect in such a seamless way in the way that I hope these books convey the way that text and art live together. So I see that same relationship in the editor and designer um, interaction. We are holding hands through the whole thing. We have perhaps different. Uh, um, ultimately different priorities in some ways. I mean the finished product, but we we walk through the fire together at every in, in literally every single book experience. Um, there's that uncomfortable point when you don't know what the book will be or what the answer is or what the solution is, what the ch how to fix the challenge. Um, and we, we work through that together. Um, and often surprise ourselves with the results. And it, it, it really is the heart of what keeps me just so devoted to what I do. Um, it's incredibly exciting and gratifying and really, really scary. Mm -hmm. Scary like the troll sometimes, but. Um, <laughs> and John Clausen seems uniquely involved in a design process. Does that, did that happen in this case too? Absolutely correct. When I shared um, this design, I mean, this is his typography. He has a, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, John has an aesthetic that's very that 
you know, is true to him. It is the essence of his art, artistic expression. And, you know, we certainly, um, you know, it was very, he, he um, tends to be very spare, mm -hmm. um, tends to be minimalist in color. And we would push that um, a little bit in great conversations with John. We had many creative uh, explorations where we would ask, like, well, what does the, the troll's home look like? Um, is he marking off, um, you know, day by day? Mm -hmm. Like, he is so bored, and he's been there forever. Um, and, like, what are the details? You know, the, cro the, the skull and the bone hanging. Um, we, we and, and some of the bones sort of scattered mm -hmm. around him on the ground. Um, and, 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 yes, the, the, fork, the, the fork and the spoon. I mean, John stayed very true to his own artistic style, but, you know, added these layers of details. And that's what we would sort of mm -hmm. do step by step, or embellishments on the bridge where the, the bulk of the story um, telling takes place. Um, and and he felt very strongly about look at the um, skull. I know, <laughs> <laughs> little macaque. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know the text panels and the way they kind of waded into, um, like a curtain coming in and out too, was something John was very intentional about. So his design stamp um, is very visible here, mm -hmm. and as I said, intentional. And worked he worked very closely with Patty Ann Harris and Don Boo who was also a designer on this um, story. And it was funny, in chatting with John after ALA, he mentioned where the wild things are and the way the, the landscape expands and shrinks mm -hmm. as the tension builds. And you can kind of see some of that um, influence here too, which I loved learning um, in, in my conversation with John. Um, but his design aesthetic is, um, really key to this finished product. Is this the book we were talking about early about determining who the good guys are and who the bad yeah. guys are and how it sort of, it's another way it sort of plays with your expectations and things shift a little bit. Yes. Um, and you, you kind of end up feeling a little sorry <laughs> for that whole <laughs> troll, maybe. It's so well. true, he's just hungry, right? <laughs> and um, and he's tricked by these goats. So yeah, the question is like, who who is good and who is bad? Who, who's the hero and who's the enemy, the good guy, bad guy? Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of conversations and it's interesting, um, you know, it opens up a conversation with kids too um, because those labels are never mm -hmm. clear cut. Mm -hmm. Well, the troll doesn't actually eat anybody in the mm -hmm. story. He doesn't. And he gets his comeuppance at the end and Mac and John both relished that moment <laughs> where he's... Well, and that's an interesting difference between folklore then and folklore now is that um, you know, it, it didn't used to be so so nuanced. There were the, you know, the wicked stepmother, there was the evil this, the troll was that. Um, and so some of this, some of this nuance that's coming in now and has been for the, you know, recent retellings, um, they do complicate these, these stories that people think that they know and assumptions that people think that they make. And you look at the cover and you see this cute little person and, or, <laughs> Goat. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you know, creepy creature, um, and you think you know the story, and you think you know, and mostly yes, but also, you know, there's a little bit of doubt, and what you think you know, um, being able to question that in in these in these examples, I think it better serves a reader and a thinker and a child to be able to look a little deeper at who's the villain and who's the hero and interrogate the text yes as you would say yes <laughs> well, yes i do think so and max kind of begging to be right for for kids to interrogate the text yeah. even oh, yeah. Yeah. um provocative is the word i i come up with and i i do think it sparks conversation and kids do have deep feelings about i mean this is the kids always know right they're on the front line each and every day mm -hmm. dealing yes. with a reality that I hope is reflected in, in so many of our stories um, and allows them um, a place, a safe place to explore some of mm -hmm. those harder, you know, what, is it, what does it feel like to be bullied? What does it feel like to be the bully? You know, Matt, for, for me, and I discovered uh, the importance of kind of breaking through the third wall in Mac B. Kids Buy, where I invited Mac to share a note in the front matter directly to readers. And it was very exciting that he did that. And, you know, when we were talking about this story, so much of Mac's voice is really, I think, the magic here in this telling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I mentioned even before, we had 
commissioned John, I asked Mac to create a sort of letter to readers, and he, he resisted a little bit. He was like, I'm not sure. I, he said, where's it going to go? And I said, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I love you speaking directly to the reader. I said, maybe we'd put it on the copyright page. Maybe we'd find a place in the end papers. Maybe, you know, let us deal with that. But I said, you write it. And he, he was like, what do you want me to do? He said, <laughs> I, 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 you know, here are some thoughts that I've pulled from other things you've said about this writing experience. So Mac crafted something. And he said, I didn't want to do it. And you know I didn't want to do it, but I've done it. And, and he said, now it's over to you and Patty Ann to figure out where it will go. <laughs> and we couldn't find the right place for it. And... We've placed it on the front flap, which, as far as I know, a letter from the author has not been placed on a front flap as mm -hmm. the copy. Mm -hmm. But to me, the immediacy of that message direct from, from mm -hmm. Mac and you know, his goals uh, in telling the story to the reader was the best way to encapsulate um, what the story means and to hear directly from him was really powerful. So that's another little detail um, mm -hmm. I'm excited. Um, about in this telling, and it's yeah. something we'll carry over in our future fairy tales, too. I love that Mac wears his learning so lightly. <laughs> you know? Yes, he does. You're right. And it's deep. I mean, mm -hmm. many people don't know he was also a teacher. He's a student, but he was also a kindergarten teacher. Um, so he'll change things based on read aloud experience. We mm -hmm. talk about the read aloud. He'll read to kids and come back to me and say, I read this and I'm gonna, you know, this, this part didn't work. This was a great example of a book that reading in your head, you get one thing and then reading it out loud to a kid, you get, you know, the laugh lines and yes. yeah. How did you pick the page turns in here? When did that happen? Um, Sometimes an author will choose the page turns. Um, once we decided John was the artist, Mac was like, I'm leaving this to John. Mm -hmm. Patty Ann and I you know, will sometimes give an artist, especially someone of John's incredible talent and gifts, the chance to, to choose their page turns with people, some people like for an editor and, a, and an art director to choose those page turns. They are so important. It's like art notes. For, for me, sometimes those can be very distracting. Sometimes they can be illuminating for an artist. But with John, we asked him, would you like to do the, the, the you know, take a first stab? And, and he said yes. And we did make some changes. Um, we were challenged by lengthy text at the end. Um, and we had some uh, debate about where, um, where we should place this text. The troll floated down the river around the bend and where he ended up, I really can't say. Um, we had originally intended for this to be on the previous, um, but it fit most um, sort of firmly here on this final spread, um, even though it was sort of alluding to action that took place before that. But it, we felt like in the finished product, it really ended. And we wanted the final waterfall scene to be very, very narrow yes. to um, to house that text. These are some of the, I won't say compromises, but just decisions that need to be made along the way. Um, and you never know until you get there. This was so, such a perfect all on its own that to see more text, I yes. think would have been, yes. this, the, the, this was the right choice. <laughs> to you, let Alyssa. that be, I think. I, am this, I think this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't use a page turn here. And in some ways, is that not the embodiment of the entire, <laughs> of life's journey? All you have to do is cross the bridge. I wanted to share something, and it's a gift for you, um, mm. from Mac and John, uh, created by John Clausen's mom and <gasps> John. Ah! So we want you to have <laughs> oh uh, this felt uh, oh! for you to keep as a gift. <laughs> That's... <laughs> I just want to say thank I'm so you, grateful. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's so funny. I'm thankful for your time today. I've so enjoyed chatting with you both. <laughs> um, Scholastic, as you know, we just celebrated our hundredth anniversary, and I know yours is coming up. Uh, coming yours up. is coming. Yeah. So um, yeah. it's particularly. Um, you know, timely for us mm -hmm. to come together and, yeah. and talk. So thank you for having I'm very me. Very glad we could do it. That's great. Thank you for thank being you here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alyssa Darling. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.